91, let's do it. Sound crash music. Shit, we took a week off, but we back. <laughs> I hope y'all miss us. We missed y'all too. <laughs> Welcome live from San Diego, California. This is the last Jiggas Up podcast episode of 2017. Oh my gosh. I repeat, the last episode of 2017, which is also episode 91 of the Jiggas Up podcast. And you know me. I'm your host, Yo, it's Marco, and I'm with... It's your guy, I'm Easy. It's your girl, Miss Nessa, a.k.a. Blaze Your Mommy. Well, all right there. So however you listening to this podcast, make sure you subscribe, <laughs> rate, and review. Yeah. And most importantly, make sure you share. <laughs> whatever favorite, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> whatever favorite po- podcasting platform you're listening to. So go oh, ahead, yeah, spread the word. I'm doing my fake ass Midnight Love radio voice song. Sound like you supposed to be on a Spike Lee movie or something. <laughs> 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 oh shit, Spike Lee. Oh Spike Lee. Oh, she's gotta have it. I still haven't watched it. Are you? I haven't you finished it. Okay. Nope. It's just I've been watching other stuff. It's like, like I watched it. It just came and went to me. It didn't hit me. It didn't strike a chord. I mean, it's like, it's Spike Lee trying to be modern and then he hit you with the artsy shit mm-hmm. with the theater shit and you motherfuckers know? start dancing out of nowhere yeah, yeah, see. And, and, and jazz music like that I'm like niggas ain't really fucking with jazz like that in 2017 like that yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know I still love his choice of music in, in his yeah. stuff and the artsy like the intro was dope I, yeah. I, I still want that from it's still him. it's still artsy but yeah but the other stuff like the but the the part that cracked me up, I don't know if you got, I don't know if you made it that far, but uh, what's that? What's that girl's? Uh, Nola's boss, Rockaletta Moss. Nah, she kept talking herself in the third person throughout the whole monologue. She's oh like Rockaletta Moss, Rockaletta Moss. I'm like, oh my god, Spike, did you write this shit? <laughs> did you write this shit? Yeah, had to. Oh my god. He had to have written it. Oh my god. You you need like Issa like. Help you or something. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, that'd be interesting. That, if, that if she's, cool if she's got to have it was a was something that was like a little. Close I think. To I think. I think. It, I think it was trying to answer. Uh, you know, insecure for the East Coast people, mm. for Brooklyn. Yeah, because the similarities the, were there. Mm-hmm. Uh, black women protagonist. Uh, you make Issa's character. Of course, Issa was a was an un was a what. Insecure, <laughs> insecure protagonist. Um, you know, she had many layers to her character. Of course, she's not, uh, she's a very flawed character, and that's what makes it work for any drama. And she, you know, is questioning, you know, she's single, she's questioning her infidelity, she's trying to move on with her life, as opposed to Nola Darling, who is a sex positive, polyamorous, pansexual woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, a that, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, they do exist, but like, man, that's a unicorn. Uh, <laughs> no, no persingas. Uh, Stupid. <laughs> shout out to our New York listeners out there, dead ass B. <laughs> right. So o, O D. O D. But uh, man, how you guys doing, man? Took the week off. How was y'all holidays? It was cool, man. A lot of uh, a lot of food. A lot of food. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of food. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of food. Food. food chilling. Just, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it was cool. We watched a, basketball, yeah. play NBA. What did I play? NBA Jam. Oh, you played <laughs> like, that? Okay. Yeah. My cousin kept saying, like, come on, let's play, let's play. They have, like, every single console, like, available. Like, you since know, Atari. I almost <laughs> thought you said they gave you every single console because oh, they, no. they was getting replacements. And I'm like, Damn. Hey, that's a, which, uh, <laughs> which one you don't want? No, but you that's know what? That's about to run the arcade circuit or some shit. Yeah, so one of them, 
they they're like, oh, my mom's gonna give me Xbox, um, an Xbox One. I was like, don't you already have one? He's like, yeah. I'm like, why is he getting a, getting you another one? He's like, I don't know, just because it's there. Like my my mom's weird. Like my aunt is so weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and okay. mind you, there's seven of them. Did you like ask total. About that old one. <laughs> 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 no, but there. So she'll get one for one, and she'll get one for that. But they like share it, so it's kind of like technically they don't need to because even if she buys one for one yeah. she buys one for the other like one year she bought like all of them xboxes like what are they gonna do with three consoles the only thing <laughs> i would say is if they wanted to play online together yeah because oh, you can't yeah. do that just on one xbox that's true. and that would be super yeah, dope. you don't want to be co-op and split screen and shit yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah that's whack yeah They'd have to be in separate rooms, though, or separate TVs. For we sure, off so. that shit, B. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unless you really want to do that for fun. That shit would be funny. <laughs> shit, uh, That's a crazy thing about video games, too. I mm-hmm. want to just add this real quick. Mm-hmm. Everything's social in a video game. Like, nobody just goes and plays on their own by themselves to that video game. They have to get online and play with their friends or people, just random people. It's all social now. Mm-hmm. Like the only time, the only reason the games will sell is because of the the social, the social aspect of aspect it. of it, which is crazy now. Mm-hmm. That's tight. <laughs> right. I, just, I, I haven't I haven't been picking up the sticks in a while. I just yeah, man. I, I, I miss I, you, I, man. I'm, I'm semi retired, <laughs> man. Brother, my brother missed you on there, man. <laughs> I remember this nigga used to call me thirsty when I get online. <laughs> playing Cause we be playing, and, and you see like the results <laughs> of each round. I'm like, damn, this nigga, man, <laughs> I gotta catch up. <laughs> we're like we're on the same team, as, you know what I'm saying? But he'll be like the number one person making the impact, killing the most, and all that shit. <laughs> I'm down here getting like the twos and fuses. Getting, get, getting, getting hate mail from motherfuckers. Right. They thinking I'm Mexican because it says, yo, it's Marco. <laughs> right. <I'm> fucking <laughs> right. camping Mexican. Oh, what? My God. <laughs> People call me all kinds of niggers online because they, they started losing. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucked up. Now, do you know who else is funny online? That nigga, uh, Jankius. Oh, Jankius. Shout <laughs> out to Ad- Yes. I mean, you played with him. I didn't know you played. Oh, dude, he plays like he was one of the first niggas, uh, like who told me about playing online and shit. Okay, that nigga be talking hella shit. <laughs> That's funny. And, and it's so funny because you know, like he's a big dude, mm-hmm. and he be talking shit. And then my motherfuckers say some shit back to him. He's like, I bet you won't say it to my face. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, he's like, With a no smile shit. on his face. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, Eddie Brock looking at him. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure he would say it to his face <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Nigga, find, he's, he's the type of hey, hey, shout out to him. He's the type of nigga who will find your I, IP address. <laughs> <laughs> pull, pull up to your house. Jay and Silent Bob style. <laughs> Beat the funny. fuck out of you. Yeah. That is funny as fuck. <laughs> That's my guy, though, man. Got to get him back on the episode. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. But we're going to switch things up, man. I don't have nothing to save segment because this is a year-end wrap-up. But uh, since we didn't get, get to record last week, Miss Nessa here has her NSA ready, and she has to get some shit off her chest. So mm. the floor is yours, Miss Lady. <laughs> Damn, son, what do you find this? This the Jig is Up podcast with Nessa's service master. <laughs> I got I to gotta get K-Mart to do one for, for 2018 right? or something. <laughs> or pay a DJ or a producer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Killing my guy here. This <laughs> <laughs> is the end right here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something very gross. Aww, nah, I'm gonna say <laughs> All I was going to say is if he sounds like he's fucking up ice cream or something. No, no, it sounds like, it sounds like um, you know, you're getting head from your girl. Uh, and she's trying to make you come, but you can't come. But your heart is fucked, <laughs> and she's just struggling really hard to get you get uh, you off. And you just look at her like, "Oh, bless your heart." Right. <laughs> you're sitting there just doing all all the tricks, the tongue, it's like man, just the stop. throating. You don't, you don't have to do that anymore. She Aww. she. But I want you to come. Yeah, that's like our greatest. But like, but it, satisfaction. But but guys, but got don't. But ladies, uh, <laughs> a guy enjoys when you see tears rolling down your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little, maybe just a little snot, little oh struggle snot. Yeah, I'm cool. Keep y'all <laughs> snot. Keep the snot in your nose. Like don't do that. Don't do that. But but the tears snot. though. But but the tears though. The the, yeah, the struggle oh, that's tears. Easy. 
Oh yeah, guys, guys love that shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I oh, gotta do you, his gag you, real quick. You okay? Waterworks. You okay, girl? We'll oh, give you man. some tissue. Just leave it, leave, leave the spit on it. Just leave the spit on leave. it. Leave. Yeah. <laughs> the gag report. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, I don't know Ooh, when I do that like shit. I get in like I get embarrassed but I feel like don't get embarrassed niggas like love that shit like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm that. telling you this, <laughs> he probably know, gained another <laughs> half inches in girth like that shit right <laughs> he'll probably find an extra inch that wasn't there before <laughs> nigga, you do that to a nigga he what <laughs> Did you just go inside my mouth? Yes, I Why did. Why does it feel like you got bigger? Because I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I had it in there. Right. You stupid. <laughs> You're so dumb. <laughs> you just donated another ounce of blood down there. <laughs> from a, from another part of my body. <laughs> the brain the brain reacted to it. It's like, nigga, we need more blood down there. Right. She is gagging. Right. Gag- oh, my God. Pump in the extra blood. He's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Press the red button. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, oh, I try not to gag, but sometimes it just happens. Oh my and then the tears start coming, and I'm just oh like. Oh, yeah. That's you life. can't even wipe your hands because you got spit all over it from doing all this shit. Oh, the basket weed <laughs> technique? <laughs> Nessa doing the basket <laughs> weed technique out here? No comment. <laughs> no comment. I Too mean, late for that. <laughs> I get it done. I get it done. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> whoever, whoever you get it done to, you fuck. Mm. And I bet you niggas who listen is like, mm, fuck. Right. <laughs> this is with me. Fuck. I mean, because I have a little mouth, so. I Dude, don't like keep it. saying that. Shut up. <laughs> You're giving what? the listeners all kind of like imagery. They're like, little mouth. Right. Basket weed. <laughs> uh, Tears coming out of jacking eyes. out to the episode and shit. Keep right. replaying you, your parts. As like <laughs> Hitting that 15 second button. <laughs> Both, right, right. <laughs> the 15 seconds back. Hit the 15 seconds. Unless you talk back. a little bit. 15 seconds back. You're so <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I got something for her. Hey. Little mouth. Let's go. Hey, as <laughs> long as they keep following. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll take one for the team, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, 15 man. seconds on that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, y'all. This NSA is brought to you by moi, Miss Nessa. And um, I know my last few ones, I never really, I haven't been having titles for them, but this one, I found a title, and it's Fuck Boys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Boys R Us. Yep. <laughs> Shout outs to Toys R Us. We're going bankrupt. <laughs> oh, <Aww>, bankrupt. <laughs> I, don't I didn't know that. that. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, Toys R Us bankrupt. They're done. Damn. So the like internet, even the internet Ooh. happened. So even like Babies Amazon. R Us and stuff like Amazon that. Amazon <laughs> happened. Uh, like even Babies R Us and all that too. Like everything, or is it just? Toys I think R Us? it's just Toys R Us right now. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Baby R Us is next. Nigga, stores are gonna be gone. They're gonna be replaced by Amazon. Yeah. And That's everybody's true. gonna be delivering for them. Right. That the is fuck? true. <laughs> just put your dogs away. Damn it. Damn. You expecting the package? I was just at Toys R Us too, man. Ghost Town. So it makes sense. Yep. That's crazy. How if the, the police world is looking for you, you should hide technology. out at Toys R Us. <laughs> you can hide out at <laughs> never look there. Hide, hide out at Toys R Us during the zombie apocalypse or some oh shit. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to think about no apocalypse. You all hang out there, you're like, fuck, try to hide his shit, and then you're like, well, shit, where the fuck? But there's no food there. There's video games. <laughs> you just gonna starve to death playing video games can you, can and you, candy. Can, hey, could you imagine trying to hide from <laughs> Chucky no in a, teeth, in a Toys R Us? Hide from Chucky? <laughs> That'll be difficult as fuck. S- side note, side note. Especially if he <laughs> if it's if it's the toys out. Yeah, don't go through that out. <laughs> hi, I'm, ch- hi, I'm oh, Chucky. Fuck no. I'm kicking guys- every last one of y'all little niggas. <laughs> They all, like, <laughs> all y'all they, niggas. They all getting, getting thrown the fuck out and, and put in a pile. Do you guys follow Sita on Snapchat? No, no, so I don't I follow Sita. So I was looking at her photo. She took a picture of her son with all his toys, and it was a bunch. 
And then there was a good guys one. And I was just like, what the fuck? so I texted her. I was like, nah, I was like, oh, Chucky. And she was just like, yeah, oh, my gosh. So she sent me a separate video mm. and it he was bawling, crying because like open your Chucky gift or your good guys gift. And then she, he was like, no, no, I'll show you the video later. No, no, oh, cry, cry, this. cry. And then they're like putting it in his face. He's like, no. And they're like, and someone's like, it's not the doll. It's not the doll. Just open. He's like, no, no. And then finally they open it for him. And he's like, no. Oh. Well, I didn't know because it was just like a figurine with all the different heads, like from the last one, the cult. You uh-huh. know how it had like the messed up no. one and all yeah. that stuff. So it was a little figurine of it. But he thought it was an actual doll and he was <laughs> bawling. I'll show you later. I was dying Chucky laughing. still terrorizing little kids, right? homie. He terrorized yeah, the yeah. fuck out of me. <laughs> and that movie was made in the late 80s. <laughs> My sister said her roommate, because she's in the military, her roommate has a has a Chucky doll. And she, when she, every time she comes in the room it's either like on the chair or it's on the bed it's all in different <laughs> things room, just place it everywhere yeah. place it in whoever, whoever got the dog doing that shit on purpose nigga. <laughs> <laughs> now now if now if they make them tails of the hood little oh, penny looking motherfucking dolls no. hey I, i'm gonna be like i'm gonna be like killing how he collecting all these uh figures i'm gonna have all them Oh hell! hell no. I'm never going I to your place. Hey, come through, man. Hell you just, you no! Just sit in the rocking chair. That nigga, I'm have the fucking oh. <laughs> motherfucker having the mirror roll and shit. No way. Yeah, I see one white silhouette. I'm getting the fuck out. <laughs> I do that. I do that. Shit on purpose. Every time somebody come visit me, one silhouette will pop up. <laughs> oh, <hell laughs> I no. paint it in and shit. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. And I and I have a rocking chair. I'm like, hey, come in, man. Sit in the rocking chair. Have, shit. have a seat. Put up. Put up. Put have a little machine. Get it all and sit in my lap. Put up. Good. What y'all put, doing today? Put a little machine underneath the rocket chair and so make it look rock like it's rocking by itself. And I'm going to oh, go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Have it like <laughs> control it on the app yeah. and shit. Turn that shit on. <laughs> hey, man, hey, you, 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 right, I'll be in the bathroom. You hear a nigga. Like, hey, man, I'm about to get up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't hear nothing. You just hear the door slam. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> the and, car and drive off. Call and the, like, where you go? And the actual <laughs> music playing with him. <laughs> oh, see, I ain't going to do all that. <laughs> Hey, I, 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 <laughs> see, I, I done went extra, but I ain't, I'm not gonna take that extra step. <laughs> if I hear a little, I thing, come out the bathroom, new motherfuckers, I'll be standing in the line. If I hear a little footstep, his little like, footsteps, like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I stay in the hey. bathroom and call somebody. <laughs> hey, here, hey, hello, police. <laughs> I tell the police, like, because that's how the motherfuckers house. sounded, right? They were like, <laughs> 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 nigga, fuck that. The niggas can clear a bush. Niggas, <laughs> niggas sounded <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. He yeah. like, clear that old bush. I mean, the whole got hops, dude. All right. Now that nigga's African. <laughs> I hate you. That nigga's a hundred percent human. I hate you. <laughs> that is nigga. That nigga's original man. <laughs> original man. <laughs> that is a, that is an original man right oh, there. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, we get off track. I call Nessa. Hey, uh, uh, what you doing right now? You trying to get some food? You trying to get some food? Cause you know my ass will be like, yeah, for sure, let's go. <laughs> Like, that nigga, fuck that. I'm gonna burn this house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna leave. We gonna be at the taco shop. I'm gonna get a phone call. <laughs> hey man, your house on fire. Oh shit, I left something in the oven. Right. <laughs> oh really? I oh. left the gas tank in the oven. <laughs> Go figure. Right. I be like, uh, you sure you want to stay? Like, don't you want me to take you? Like, yeah. What? You be like, oh my gosh, should I take you back? No. <laughs> Nah, not but yet. Your house is on fire. Little, <laughs> the little, room, little, the little room niggas will follow you. <laughs> you burned down my house. Oh, right, motherfucker, be in your car. Hell no. I know what you. Hell remember, no. Remember, hell remember, no. Remember, remember the little motherfuckers chilling in the limousine like. <laughs> 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 and then dude no. picked up the doll. You're like, who the fuck put? Hey, driver, pull over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking. Bad Nothing seat. came into your car, sir. <laughs> 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 Oh, shit. Why That's are you talking scary shit? shit? That's right? tight, though. Oh, this shit's funny. <laughs> oh, gosh. Especially the scenario I put up, put together. Shit, that would be funny to me. <laughs> to you, hell Y'all no. be like, hell no, nah, them voodoo mm-hmm. dolls or whatever nope. the things is. Nah, I'm Fuck cool. Fuck around if you want to. She, you know what's funny? She, To me, that lady in the rocket chair is like the dead silence lady, but the black version. She did it first. <laughs> <laughs> she had all the dolls first. Man, yeah, no. you know... The homie fucked up when he hit that flagpole and the nose started to bleed. Uh. I was like, you're going to die. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nigga, you had all that chance to walk out the place. No way, no way. Nothing. I'm going to watch it while I'm at work tonight. Oh, yeah, go ahead and do that. I ain't going to walk not a fucking step right. outside. <laughs> 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 Let's see how that works out I'm for standing. you. Because <laughs> if I'm walking through the halls in the middle of the morning. Yo, fuck and that. And I hear, 
Dude, yeah, like, that shit, that should be a trip because I remember doing um, <clears throat> night auditing for the same hotel. Don't tell me no scary shit, man. No, no, no. Do I'm just, it, no, 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 no. I don't have any scary it. stories. Good. But I just that's know, good, good. I know I'm like Bushwick Bill. My mind's playing tricks on me. You know how you have to slide in all the, the, the shit underneath the, you know, for people to check out? Yep. And I just be doing it real quick. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> go down. <step. laughs> Fuck that. Let me get in the front at right. least. You know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Fuck that. You said don't tell. Oh, me I thought you about to care. I, I thought you about had to have a story like, yeah, I, I was over here and then I heard something and it was like and this little dog. They flipped it back. <laughs> it with the dog in the lobby with me and shit. Like, uh-uh. I mean, I heard couples fucking. I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty. Me too. All right, yeah, all right. Then. I heard couples getting it in. I'm Walking like, through right, there. Up, <laughs> I stop. I stop for a minute, like. <laughs> you fucking smack, creeper. Smack her ass. <laughs> you all whispered into the door. Smack her ass. <laughs> 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 Who was that? <laughs> walk away like nothing. <laughs> he look under the under the door, you see a shadow go by. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga dip out. <laughs> I'll break down the stairs and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you fell down. <laughs> Imagine if I fuck up and roll down the stairs. Oh shit! <laughs> Do, 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 do. That's oh. your ass get. Oh. Now I quit a job right before this job because uh-huh. I thought the shit was hard to do, mm-hmm. and I was working over now. I ain't play that. Yeah, <laughs> hell to the no. Turnover rate, man. I heard about some shit like that too. Like niggas turnover rate dumb high. Like doing like night audit or overnight work for like the grant. Fuck that. Mm-mm. And and uh, I think hotel <laughs> Del Coronado yeah. too. Oh yeah, they they're talking. They always hiring for overnight. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. I don't see nothing. I don't care. I don't care if it's. Well, I don't care. I, I just hate. <laughs> Even I just, if it's like a hundred dollars a night. I mean, like, sorry, okay. an hour. A <laughs> uh, hour. Yeah, I might yeah, be that up shit, in there. That shit would just trip me out because you know sometimes motherfuckers be talking like, do you think you're talking to a regular person? Mm-hmm. He was like, yeah, man, his name was Jim Clancy. He was a cool guy, man. I, I was looking for him. I couldn't check him in. But for some reason, he just chilled at the lobby all night. I'm like, Jim Clancy died like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Right. Or, or point no. to a picture from 1930 and a motherfucker yeah, in the picture like, or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I quit. I quit. I ain't coming back, dog. Nigga, I'm like, after that, I'll be like, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? What's the meaning of life? Nigga, I'll like, be off the grid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be off the grid. <laughs> See some shit like that? Hell I'm no. off the fucking grid. Fuck this. Fuck this. I'm sorry, that's it. We fucking on a it's tangent. Okay. But it's a 2017 it tangent. It it's is. the last episode of 2017. Alright, fuck boys are us. Okay. Fuck boys are us. Yes. <laughs> so I was having a conversation with my girl yesterday, and I just I you know, I just figure boys will be boys. And I just come to the conclusion that most men don't want to be fucking happy. Like, I'm actually almost convinced that most men do not want to be happy. So, story time. Chin rubbing moment. So, right, right. <laughs> hmm. I've talked about Miss Gina a few episodes. And this is an update to an update, right? So, Gina, for those of you that need a quick reminder, she was the one that was dealing with a dude and then... He ended up going back to his ex, toxic relationship, whatever, right? <clears throat> so Gina's scrolling through her timeline on Facebook, right? And she stumbles across a post that states that old dude, I don't think we gave him a name, but old dude proposed to his ex. So mind you, this was on Christmas Day. <laughs> Christmas oh, wow. Day, right? So remember, not too long before that, he was about to head out to go see her, and he hit her up like, "Yo, can you know come down to L.A.?" Remember, he wanted her to come down and smash one more time, uh-huh. right? And then he was gonna go to his toxic ex situation, and she was supposed to move out here the end of this sh- month, which now apparently she is down here, and he had proposed to her. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. Do you remember who I'm talking about, though, right? Yep, yeah. I remember. Okay, so remember, he was dealing with my girl, Gina, yeah. since February. Yep. Then, out of nowhere, in October, he springs the news on her, like, hey, I'm going to try to work things out with my ex. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, mind you, like I said, the, they had a toxic relationship. They don't have kids together, but she was help raising his child. She has a child on her own, and he has a child from someone else, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then they're supposed to work things out. He was going to move her down here this month, and they're supposed to try it out again, right? <coughs> Apparently, I don't see how this happened, but... Some shit must have went right if he proposed, I would assume, right? Mm. But it doesn't make any sense because he all the shit that he was talking about her, that's not something that should happen overnight. Like, yeah. like getting married is not going to fix it. I, I don't think. Marriage is not the answer. Having a baby is even worse. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I'm just really disgusted at it. But anyway... So I just don't get how like you could have a good girl in front of you, but yet you just you you sabotage what could be or the potential. And I know I keep talking about this and I sound like a fucking <laughs> a fucking wreck a broken record, but I, I just don't get it. And it, it hurts my mind. And I know I shouldn't think about it, but I guess I can relate in a certain sense. You definitely can. Yeah. So it, it that's why I'm so passionate. And it fucking bothers me when I see this happen. It's like you'd rather take a girl that's nagging and just l pass it as, okay, well, that's normal. That's normal what females do instead of compute like or, or it, sorry. And you confuse it with those that have a woman that is really good to you. That's like that may be pleading for you to just want her like she wants you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like. It's like I don't I don't fucking get that. I feel like it's it's just pure selfishness. Like it you're selfish because you know that you have a good girl, but it's like what you'd rather go back. I feel like okay. How was I explaining this to her? I feel like it's insanity. It's pure insanity, right? Because he keeps he's he's trying to work things out, but he's going backwards. <coughs> And it's not going to make the situation better. It's, <coughs> I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I think I think he's uh, <clears throat> he's sticking to his known hell and scared to check on his unknown heavens. And I think that's what a lot of guys go through because they feel that they spent a lot of time and invested a lot of time in the in a particular person, and they believe that it can work out. But you know, you know me now. Like I'm I'm if shit's not working out, I'm a dead it. You know what I mean? Or, you know, if things are just not clicking right, you know, it's okay to hit the restart, but they're both young. They could mm -hmm. just, you know, live life. I mean, it's a whole life ahead of them. And I just feel like maybe he's just wasting his time and his energy because now you try and put marriage and kids into the mix. It's only going to make it a lot worse mm -hmm. because the shit don't work out. Then you got alimony, child support. Then you got fucking, you got a human hanging on the balance, an innocent human being. And you get, you know, an angry mom and a bitter dad is, you know, if it doesn't work out. But if it works out <clears throat> in their favor, uh, you know, I wish them all the luck. But personally, me, I just say if it's dead, it's not there anymore. It's just not there anymore. Don't even force it. Every, from, you know, my experiences and my friends and people I was talking to about relationships, or even the stuff I see on TV, like, everybody goes through some crazy shit. Everybody's a little crazy when it comes to relationships because there's people that would stay or try to make something work that mm -hmm. isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. And from the outside looking in, you can see it clearly. But when you're in it, like, you really want it to work so bad, and, and then you look at, the good versus the bad and even though the bad outweighs it some people really try like well maybe this is something i need to push through and all that because like from a guy's perspective i've seen girls do that same thing where they would shoot me down for a dude that ain't shit you know what i'm saying i'm like what's wrong with you like that that's that's not logical you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying but I've also been in that position where I tried to make something that wasn't working work by trying to make a child. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you just said. So I'm like, for me, it's it's more of a 
understanding of both sides and I can't be judgmental on either one, I would just tell him like, you know, to step back and not do what he's trying to do right now unless he knows for sure he's that's what he's going to do because this shit don't sound like it's going to work. Yeah. And I'm not there. I'm not him. I'm not, you know, I'm not her or whatever. But from the outside, it don't sound like it's going to work. Maybe he should chill for a minute, not talk to nobody. <laughs> what I say? I say I dare him. I say I triple dog dare him to hit her up after this. Like, because I feel like he's still going to hit her up. He probably will. I fucking dare his ass to. Well, I mean, if it, <laughs> but but look, but look, he he was open with her to tell her about it, even though he did some stuff that I don't agree with. I mean, what if he comes back and admits he fucked up and he what? Because you know, when you're in that p- position, you're not in your right mind. So when he gathers his right mind, you you dare him to go back and try to go with something that's good when he re- finally yeah. realizes it on his own. Yep. Because he he already knew what he was getting himself into. Now, I could see if he tried it out and he was open with it and was just mm-hmm. like, okay, things didn't work out. You know, if you're willing, you know, if you're willing to have me, like, can we see what's up? Because it didn't work out and I liked what we had. And if she chose to, like, you know, if, she, if her heart was where it was at prior to that or still is, you know, then... I could see. But the fact that he took it a step further and proposed to her, like, that shit is not an overnight thing. In order to propose some, to somebody, it should have been, like, premeditated. You know what I mean? So I'm pretty sure it was premeditated. That's what I'm saying. So if you had the thought, like, okay, I want to marry this girl, and hopefully it will work out, and it doesn't. It's like, oh, so now it didn't. Now you want to settle. Like, you know, now you want to backtrack? No. It's kind of like <clears throat> it's kind of like this. Uh, being the cleanup person. You know, uh, guess who's being the cleanup man right now? Jermaine Dupri. Uh, Janet Jackson, you know, her billionaire husband didn't work out, got a divorce. And I think rumor has it that she's back with JD. And she got a kid with the billionaire dude. Mm-hmm. So can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Oh, I can imagine that. Can you imagine? <laughs> you know, like that that high school girl you wanted to talk to. She was like, oh, you too. Nice no, 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 no. You, they, they, but you, she, they, you guys were together, right? You guys were together. It didn't work out. She gets married to a fucking billionaire. It's kind of like, in a sense, kind of like studying on you. Like, mm-hmm. nigga, I upgraded. <laughs> got a baby. She didn't work out. Can I come back with a kid that's not yours? Think about that. Oh, I thought about it. Woo, <laughs> boy. Know, I thought about it. <laughs> Woo, boy. Like, like, like even my yeah, scenario. Yeah, I'll take it. You even, know. even if I alter it to where you do talk to that person. And she, di- and she, you know, shit don't work out. She go get somebody that, you know, is not, not, not you at all. And shit don't work out. After she even had a kid and shit, try to come back and like, nah, fuck out of here. I, I, I ain't trying to play clean up. A lot of and a lot of niggas are waking up now, ladies. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot keep shunning niggas in your prime. Then when you get past your prime, thinking that that nigga's gonna stick around and still pick up the pieces. Shit has changed. Niggas got smarter. They got more hip to the game. Don't get offended either, because so my brother, <laughs> my brother, almost got chastised on Facebook for saying something like, uh, "If a girl like tries to come back and has a kid, it's a deal breaker for him." And my other women was like, "Don't be like that." And I'm like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> 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 and all that shit you talking about. Don't be going. <laughs> don't, I mean, don't they, he, he's going his own way. Yeah. He that's his option. He has the option of doing it, so that's not for him. That's not the deal on him. And you got to understand, like, maybe he wants to start a whole family with himself. Some men are fine with women who have children, mm-hmm. but not the fact that we had history. Then you go in and have a child, and they come back to me. That's what, hap- that's what happened. Oh, Wait, but do you guys know the full? But do you guys know the full story? Like, what if they was already still like talking, and that's why things didn't work out because they were already like reuniting like a flame like it wasn't just her coming like oh shit didn't work out now let me go back to you like how do you do you guys know that for a fact like is that what what said because i no, didn't it, even know it, about that. it's not it's not what it said but on face value that's what it seems like mm-hmm. you know what i mean that's what it seems like if you don't know the ins and outs but from from the outside looking in from public perception that's what it looks like <laughs> <laughs> what because <laughs> i have a because i have experience i've experienced that 
being with somebody doesn't work out, but we're still cool. Mm -hmm. And there's still a chance of things, you know, trying to work things out. Uh, the other person gets married and has a kid, and then I get a phone call of trying to, she she's trying to get back and stuff. Mm -hmm. this, this oh, old, this I believe old, this it. Old, this old stuff. No, it's I believe that that yeah. happened, and that and that sounds like it. But like we don't know the full story because yeah. they could have been cool that whole time, and he would still been. Like, what if he was just like, I know I can make you happy. Like you're not happy. Like why are you in this? You know, kind of in her head, and then she falls back. But it's not like she's like, okay. Let me, oh, things didn't work out. Ha ha, I'm happy, happy. Then things didn't work out. Okay, now let me go back with you. <laughs> All of that you just said is in my experience. Yeah, but I'm well, saying, I'm I saying, two based kids off and of try to like, but, but I'm just stuff. saying, I'm saying from my face value yeah. because I haven't experienced that. I don't, I yeah, mean, you know, I have limited experience, but that's, <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just saying it for yeah. face value. That's how most niggas outside be like, Fuck that bitch. <laughs> I, okay, yeah. I, didn't, but, I didn't say that. No, 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 no. <laughs> <I> said, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but but Jermaine, and Jermaine Dupri is smart because look, she's getting half of a billionaire's fucking money. Yeah. He's taking that child and her in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They said. But if it was just like <laughs> regular people. You don't get the fuck out of my DMs with <laughs> that bullshit. I feel like the only way it could work is if they both did that shit. They both broke off and did yeah, that thing that's and that's an even playing field. But if it's yeah. not, you know, like, because that was my whole thing. I'm like, this shit ain't you be, fair. You be feeling, you be feeling. I ain't had no kids yet. Nigga be feeling like Rodney. Nigga be just like Rodney off a of baby boy. Man. He see that little kid. He like, man, fuck you. You ain't my son. <laughs> he thought he had the rights to Yvette. You know what I mean? And he gets locked up, and he ended up getting I having want, the baby I want with Jody. My daddy. Man, fuck your punk ass daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how niggas will feel. <laughs> I don't know. I I just feel like and, and and hold on, hold on. And then also let's bring that the the fact that she could just be flip flopping from 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 nigga to nigga. She might be like, but I still have feelings because he is the father of my child. Yeah. That nigga still puts himself at risk of getting hurt too. Yep. That's yeah, another yeah, thing, that whole stigma, and that, and that's why that's why I feel that men are getting smarter these days. Women, you can't keep using those old tricks before. Niggas are trying to like leverage themselves when it comes to starting family and investing themselves in the person. You know why men are getting smarter these days, Marco? What's up? Because females is acting like niggas and niggas is acting like, like bitches. Because <laughs> <laughs> your coochie fell off. That's so stupid. <laughs> Some of y'all acting bitches. <laughs> nah, I just feel like dudes feel like it's easier to stay with those type of people because at the end of the day, they can, they can throw them away. Like they're disposable. Mm. But if you find someone who is considered or deemed perfect in your eyes, because like I said, we're her. She just bought her own house, built it from the ground up. She's about to move with in. Her own, with, with her own, with her bare hands? With, with, shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 with well, her own incredible. money, so damn near, because her, her hard labor from work. Girl. Man, I know them hands will be <laughs> rough. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And she about to pay. <laughs> she about to pay off her car this month. Like she has all her shit together. So it, yeah, though it seems intimidating it, to most guys who don't have their shit together or don't feel up to par they'll look at her as perfect so it's like if i fuck that shit up i'm gonna regret it the rest of my life now if you with a bitch that don't got shit going for herself if shit don't work out it's kind of like oh well she wasn't shit either mm -hmm. and that's how i feel like most guys like they don't they don't want to be happy because they're scared of what could be like if they fuck shit up then they'll regret it the rest of their life i mean I was, I'm, I mean, I ain't been there, but I can see where you're talking about. Yeah. But I have let someone perfect go. I was like, I know I'm going to regret the shit, but it's just not where I'm at. You it's know? timing. You know? Yeah. Like, you, you. Timing. And then also, if the you woman's. You like what you like. And, 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 and if the woman's patient enough to, to deal with your struggles, too. You know what I mean? Like, you know, personally, I've been going through some, you know, stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. knowing that I have a good thing, but at the same time. I have my struggles, not just, to, you know, being up to par with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Because I feel like, okay, I need to get my shit together. And, and I know sometimes some women, they work differently. Some women's like, nah, nigga, you got to get your shit together. Some women's like, nah, I'll ride with you, and I'll help pick you up and build you up with me, with you. You know what yes. I mean? And it's hard for men to differentiate, differentiate each, uh, each one because niggas already thinking about, like, you know, it goes back to that uh, insecure episode. Dudes want to be the sole provider. Dudes want to be the the alpha male. I mean, in most aspects of at least be the provider financially of the place. Yeah. Be the breadwinner. Yeah, and I agree, but I feel like you can't even say that because you're you're comparing apples to bananas because you're saying that there's females that are like writing you like you got to do this, you got to be this, you got to be that. But then when you do have the ones that say, I really fuck with you right now in the state that you are in right now i still fuck with you and are not complaining that you're not where you're where you feel that you're supposed to be then they're fucking there it's genuine like i'm sorry what, what well I, well all I, all I was gonna say is like but the, the one thing even i would say a oh, woman ahead. has the complete package as far as everything as a person and stuff and has her own house and all that shit if if the dude don't like her, he don't, he just don't like her like enough. If you don't like mm-hmm. her enough, he just don't like her enough. He basically just likes that other woman more. Mm-hmm. No, but I'm t- I'm speaking about what Marco's talking about. Mm-hmm. How he's saying like some females they're just like you know I mean all in all most men are perceived to be the breadwinner because what is that what society says or is that how you feel personally? You know what I mean? I would because say I would say I would how say society both. says, and then also because um, society and, trained us to think that way. But I think sometimes relationship dynamics work out that way. I think honestly, in our primal instincts, I think men feel better, more masculine when they're the breadwinner of the family. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that the woman can't provide and be, you know, on her own and be independent. They're like no problem with that. But as long as the guy can at least hold his weight. Because think about it like this. You got to think of it as a, you know, I hate to say it, but like an exit strategy. Shit don't work out. You know, she getting half of your shit? Are you guys leaving peacefully? Can you make that transition? Can you get hurry up and get it bounced? Like, if you need to leave the house, could you, like, go to an apartment and get a new new place to rent like that? Or do you have to move back into your mom's house? Or do you have to stay at the homie's couch for a while? You know what I mean? Like, that. you know, sometimes guys think about exit strategy. As well, maybe maybe I do. I mean, it, it makes sense because we, we naturally think that way, like how y'all naturally look for men that make you feel secure and safe mm-hmm. and protected. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that will fall in the place of us providing. So that you know that makes sense. Yeah, I know, but I just I feel like if a woman's fucking with you as is, and you know, just imagine how it's gonna be when you get to your potential, like where you you feel like you'll be because i feel like some people it's like okay so they do guys do one of two things either they'll say okay i got a good woman in front of me but i'm just gonna fuck it off i'm gonna regret it later but whatever fuck it i fucked up or they'll be like okay i see a good thing in front of me let me you know let's do this let's try this out but then they're still it's like it's it's not like they're it's like they're not really in a relationship, if that makes sense, because it's like she's still having to. Sorry, I was like, sorry, I don't know. You guys could chime in really quick. Well, I was going to say uh, she can say. She fucks with the guy this as he is, but. Like what? Who's to say? Like she doesn't realize later. Like oh wait, this is starting to become a thing. Like for me, or for her personally, that that she really doesn't. I will say. That. I will say. It's another thing that guys are probably, are probably uh, pensive about. You know, jumping into a good thing, even though the girl fucks with him completely from the stage that where he is now, is the fact that people are fickle. In one moment she may love you. Then the next maybe a year or so, things ain't really working out. She probably loses patience. Then she starts to ride you. Then she become she becomes the the woman that he thinks that every woman is usually like anyway. The shit you know he was mean? scared of from the beginning. Yeah, the type of woman that but you're scared of from the but beginning. But that's not that's not fair to those of us that aren't. I like know that. it's not fair, but, but in human error, we're fickle at nature. 
you can't deny like humans aren't just going to stick to one monolithic thought throughout the rest of their lives. But I feel like you're you it's like you're sabotaging it from the beginning then because you're already thinking about your past and your insecurities based off of your past. So you're not you don't want it to affect you in your future. So you're being very careful, so to speak. And then what happens, you end up sabotaging. And then that's why that happens, because she ends up resenting you because she's just like, I've been fucking with you and I was cool with it. But now it's not it's you guys end up falling apart instead of getting together what if, if it's not sense. based off his past but he sees that there's a possibility that that can go down that road and jumps in anyway and then with you know not not saying like he's walking in like oh this is gonna be some bullshit but he's like man he's gonna try it out he's genuinely try it out genuinely open-heartedly and it does and it falls back into what he was thinking that it that's because he spoke it into existence that's how the universe works that nah. is. If you go into a nah, situation. Cause, nah, because because if you walk in open heartedly, you let that shit go. Yes. But then obviously you, you didn't you, let you, that shit go. Nah. You nah, didn't let that shit nah, go. Nah, it's not true. Yes, it is true. Nah, it's not true. It is true. Because most guys. Nah, because because when you when you say it in uh, you, you speaking into existence, you, you really feel it in your heart. But if you're open heart, if, if you're open hearted about walking into something and trying it out, it's not it's not in your heart no more. Like. Then you weren't open. It wasn't open hearted then. But what if it was? But it wasn't. So you're telling me yes. the only way shit would go wrong is if they walk in with thinking that. Yes. Because that that's how you sabotage. That's crap. how you sabotage. I just if I, stuff goes wrong no. regardless. Yeah, well, in well life. of course, of <laughs> course. But if I go, okay, I've been fucked over in my past, this A, B, C, D, or whatever, and then I get into a new relationship, yes, that may happen. But if you're sitting there like, okay, well, this might happen because this just happened. I remember that feeling. I don't like that feeling. You're going to keep that inside of you because of your insecurities. So, so you're going to so fuck up your so, relationship. Okay, so what do you say for the ones that don't have that past, don't think like that, they just walk into it open heartedly and don't even have that thought, and then it happens? Well, then it fucking happens. I'm talking about those that actually know when they come into a relationship. It just fucking and no, happens, listen, huh? It does happen. <laughs> oh, because shit. I'm talking, I'm speaking <laughs> off of, I'm speaking off of what I've, been into with a guy and there's like oh i was fucked over in the past i can't get into anything serious right now because i was burnt from you know my last few exes okay so you're you want to play the careful role with me and then but you're doing everything that people in a relationship do but you don't want to carry that title because you feel like that's gonna it might it might sometimes because sometimes uh I'll, i'll say from personal experience that expectations changes once that title comes in, you know what also comes with it. When you guys, when people are in situationships, it's a lot more fun because there's no expectations. When there's no expectations, I can hit her up on a date. Hey, let's go here. I don't have to check in. I don't have to, you know, whatever, you know, like I'm still doing my own thing. She's doing her own thing. When we get together, it's like escapism. Now, when it's a relationship, you have, there's no new rules are applied, new non-written rules are applied mm-hmm. as far as checking on each other. I mean, I know some women, some women hate that, but that's what it is. You know what I mean? See how they're doing. Actually having some real deep conversations or, you know, planning out the future when you only just thinking about the You're present. You're being short term as opposed to, term. and then she's long term. And she's being right? long term. And I'm like, okay, you know, you want to be long term. That, that's fine. That's, you know, but for me, like I always say that, how can I plan long term if I don't feel secure within myself as a man who could provide and who could do all these things because I'm thinking about the shit that may or may not hit us. It's the, it's not, it's not the known, uh, it's not the known unknowns as far as like pregnancy, when that's going to happen, marriage and all that. It's the unknown unknowns. Like if you get a fucking flat tire, if I get in an accident, if I get have to have insurance, if I don't, if I get hurt at work, how can I, you know, get, you know, like a whole bunch of intent, like other shit that you don't think that's going to happen can happen. And it could change the whole morale and complexity of a relationship. That's what most men, I believe, that most men think about. They don't think about, you know, you know. I mean, yeah, the the marriage, the the, the stuff like that. But we think about the sh- the unknown, scary shit. But why? Because that's how we operate. <laughs> So it's just so it's in your guys' DNA because you guys are men. I'm just I'm not yeah, being yeah, yeah, yeah. smart. I'm not being no, sarcastic. No, 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 like no, no. I really want to you know. know no. And that's why and that's why we're here. We're here to 
to understand and grasp each other's uh, concepts. So, you know, that's the that's the point point of it. And I hope the listeners are engaged right now because I know a lot of people, a lot of millennials, right now, always going through these uh, relationships. Because I feel like, okay, if you're at a certain age, Probably. yes, maybe if you're in your like early twenties, it's a little bit different mindset that you would be. But if you're already in your thirties and you're with someone that's roughly around your age, if not older, it's like I would feel that you would have to start thinking long term. Like it's in the back of our minds because we don't have a a, a, a timer. You know well, yeah, saying? but then it's like, okay, do you want to get married? Do you want to have kids? Like, I don't feel like that. Yeah, but niggas will do that in their forties. That's the thing. When but that's long term. That's you thinking long term. The thing yeah, about but, men, but men can still like produce kids. Dating somebody, yeah, when they consider marrying them in their forties, like even as far as that, like if they still feel like they want to have fun or not be tied down. That that's usually still in their thirties. Yeah, but why too. would you be in a relationship if you don't want to be tied down? I'm maybe confused. because <laughs> I, I, because maybe it's just the comfort of being in a relationship. So it's not even being a relationship; it's the companionship. Yeah, it's the companionship. So it's basically the guy is confused because well, he no, likes the companionship. No, see, now he's just bouncing around. Like I gave you the answer before about him. Who? I'm talking. I'm not even talking about a, a, a specific person. I'm b- bouncing off of what you guys are saying. So I'm talking about the now. Whatever you guys are speaking on, I'm talking about okay, that. Okay, so right now we are talking about the quote-unquote imaginary him that's in a relationship mm-hmm. but doesn't want to be in a relationship or what? No, we're that talking about. That he's kind of like tiptoeing. He's yeah. in a relationship. He's giving it a try, but he's been burnt before, so he still has his guard up. You know that, and that, yeah, and that, and that comes or, with, or he's not in a relationship, and they do relationship things, because right. I heard that too. Well, we were or talking about or. that, but then he started talking about that, so I started talking about that. So we basically, so basically, <laughs> basically, careful, slow-paced relationships or full throttle situationships. They're basically the same thing, without the title, pretty mm-hmm. much. But but the slow-paced relationship is with the title, but yeah. you still you're moving carefully. The situationship, the full throttle situationship, is basically you're moving full throttle. You 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 damn near coupled up and shit. You mm-hmm. you know you calling each other's parents, mom and pa in law and shit like that. But but y'all no st- title. Yeah, y'all still not official. But but no title. You know what I mean? So see that one makes more sense than the one in a relationship, uh, tiptoeing around in the relationship because that's because like to me that doesn't really make sense because. He's in the relationship. He's giving it a chance, even with his past. And if he's tiptoeing around it, you gotta let him come around. Yeah, he's he's trying. Even it though, out. even though, even though y'all y'all want him to come full. It's throttle. like saying I'm getting in the pool, but I'm gonna walk down the stairs. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, basically, I'm putting my toe in this pool. I'm in the three feet. I will eventually. I will venture myself to the twelve feet side, eventually. But I think with y'all, y'all guys, the women are already at the deep end. Like, baby, come on, come over here. Mm. And this nigga, like, oh, wait a minute, damn it! This, let me get adjusted to this temperature right now <laughs> before I go deeper. I guess. I mean, obviously, I mean, not. I guess I know that you know. Obviously, we think differently. But for like with with women, I feel like when we fuck with somebody and we really like somebody we could tell I, I, within the next w- I, in the, within a few months of fucking with each other whereas guys they could go a year or so and they're just like no we just having fun yeah i mean i could tell women are more prone to love fearlessly more than men yeah like dead ass like I, yeah it's natural for y'all 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 are nurturers by nature so. i done heard girls you know they have a uh, fucked up past i ain't dating no niggas right now i'm being single the next you know a month later they got another nigga Mm, on Instagram, true. yeah, relationship goals hashtag. naturally wants a relationship, <laughs> regardless of what you say, right? You know, yeah, even with the past, like us guys, we <laughs> y'all are we're not, creatures. we're not, we're not, we're not so gun ho in getting a relationship like that, yeah, because we still have that side that wants to be single and live that bachelor life too, though. So, that's a little so is bit. that why they tiptoe? <laughs> Like, would you say? Well, no, we speaking on, like, if the relationships in the past didn't work out and stuff. And mm-hmm. Yeah. They'll feel, you know, they might feel like shit just, motherfuckers just want to be single. 
Like he, you know, he flinches a little bit, you know, yeah. when it comes to certain dates. Like, shit, do I got enough money to pay for it? Are we going to half it? You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it, it just comes down to, I'm not saying like providing materialistically, but I, yeah. I feel in today's society, men will feel more better if they know, they look at their bank account and it's like, okay, I could, we could go on a vacation. We could do this. We could do that. There's no romance without finance. Not, people don't like that saying, but it's true. Like, I mean, there are probably free dates. You, you, know, you can walk around the park, all this stuff. So let stuff, me ask but you this. Would you think it's better for those guys that are really gung-ho about, like, I need to have my shit together before I can really provide and actually enjoy the relationship that I'm in to wait to get into a relationship while they're getting their shit done or, or because they don't want to feel like they'll be distracted or go ahead and, like you said, walk down the stairs in the pool and like what do you like what do you suggest for those that are in that situation men get your personal shit together get yourself together before getting into that relationship even though if you know even if you know like she's a good girl and you're probably gonna take you a good minute to find you another chick like that if you think about it that's like to jump into something when you're not ready Mm -hmm. it's not gonna work out when a person is not in the right mindset doesn't have their shit together and they they're not ready, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Even if that other person looks ready and is ready, mm-hmm. to to them, you know, they're like, "Well, yeah. me, I'm I'm not ready right now." So it's best that they step back and not get into it, like just for their sanity. Would you say? I was just say for the sake of uh, both of y'all, the the like sake, a peace of know. mind, like a peace of mind. They don't have to think about like you know. You could really just focus on you. Um, but does that guarantee that in the future you're gonna have successful relationships once you get your shit together? No, no. There's, there's not. It's no guarantees. Well, that's just chalked up to like. Yeah, that's fate. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm. But as a man going into a relationship, he will go into a relationship a lot more confidently now, than where he is I now. I have a question for you, Nessa. Mm-hmm. Now, if the guy is doing relationship things with you and only fucking with you, but y'all don't have a title, is that an issue? Eventually, yes. Not in the beginning. How so? Or why, should I say? Why is that an issue? Because mm-hmm. it's like, so what is it that, what it, why, what is it that's keeping you from that transition? Like, that's what I want to know. Let's say what I'm saying right now. He's working on himself, slowly mm-hmm. building himself up, and you're there too. What would you say to that? <laughs> Wait, what? You know how I said right now, like, a person that doesn't want to jump into a relationship, mm-hmm. a guy, he needs to work on himself. Yes. So those halfway relationships mm-hmm. where he's not fucking around, he's only fucking with you, he's just not ready to make it serious yet. What if he's working on himself but still wants you when he's ready because he's afraid That's that you're going to walk away? That's different, but say that. That's all I ask is communication is so fucking key. So Most guys, they don't say that. They keep using their past as the reason why they won't make that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I'm speaking on my situation. In the beginning, we were just fucking around, just fuck around. A couple months later, he tells me that he feels a way about me. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I thought we just fucking. Okay, let me see. Do I like you? And then I'm like, okay, I kind of like him. So that's what it was. And then when I asked a question more months down the line, that was the excuse. You know, like, I you know been burnt in my relationship and it's really hard for me to get into a relationship right now i'm not ready to commit based off of that okay cool a year goes by like when is that when is it to when is it okay to be like okay what the fuck you want me to do because i really want to be a relationship yeah it's cool you're not fucking with nobody i'm not fucking with nobody but if i want to start building and start thinking long term because like we said most females do think long term i i can't do that with you if we don't even have that relationship because I would look stupid if one day you decide, okay, I don't, I don't want to do this no more. So, okay, wait. So you said y'all don't have that relationship. We're not in a relationship. Okay. But that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. But what about how y'all are together? Do y'all have that type of relationship where it can, it can be a relationship? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, you, you uh we we told you to talk to him before right yeah and like i forget what you said though about the conversation um 
that eventually ends up with how you want to do it. Like, if you mm-hmm. bounce, you bounce. Because, oh, yeah. Because there's no reason, no time limit on when a dude works on himself. Of course. Yeah. You know, but that's so. what I'm saying. That's all I – like, the thing that's, is uh, it's communication. Just tell me that. That's the reason why is because I'm working on myself. And as much as I really fuck with you, I don't want you to be a distraction. Because that's technically what it is. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I would be okay with that's all I wanted to hear. You know what a man's greatest fear is? Well, what? not greatest, but one of their fears when they're talking to a girl and they're halfway with her, that, you know, there's situations that, well, I, I only can say it for myself. There's situations I've been in where a girl is perfect mm-hmm. and I like her, but not enough to go to that That's step. what I feel. Like, I feel like, like, you, you're cool with me to fuck with me. Like, you're like, you fuck with me, but not enough to be with me. And the fear comes in is I don't want to waste her time because this feels good. I want to keep going. Mm-hmm. It's just my feelings haven't went up more yet. The, the feelings hasn't blossomed just yet. yet. The feeling a feeling is there. Don't get it. Don't get it. Mm-hmm. Don't get it twisted. The feeling is there, but it just hasn't matured enough to a point where he's, you know, want to take that next step with you yeah where he said you know where he can say like okay i'm ready you know what i'm saying and, and the thing is i think the reason why some guys tiptoe in relationships when that a woman that are in relationships mm-hmm. and you know still being careful because he knows that he has a good thing mm-hmm. and he knows that he don't want to fuck it up mm-hmm. so it's kind of like i'm gonna give her the benefit of a doubt mm-hmm. if she says who she says she is yep why not give her a chance? Now, women, this is the part where you have to learn how to be patient. Because this shit may take time. And even, you know, personally, I let my lady know if it's taking too long, I can't be mad at her if she decides to leave. Yeah. I cannot. She has her life to live. And they'll be selfish as fuck of me mm-hmm. to tell her to stay and mm-hmm. deal with me, you know, while she know that she, you know, she f- f- could easily find a man who will be absolutely bonkers about her, you know. So that's the part, that, that's the level of maturity I'm at now. Mm-hmm. Because I know, like, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm going to give it a chance. As long as I gave it a chance, that means a lot. Right. Because I could easily say, no, nah, I'm good. It was fun while it lasted. And I have done that. You know, like, not saying I'm hot shit, but like a nigga couldn't have. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying like, I couldn't even like damn near couldn't go a whole year without being single. I was planning on going three years single. Yeah, I had a plan. I was like, "Yeah, I had a plan." I was like, "Nigga, I'm gonna be single for the next three, two years." Like, <laughs> <laughs> it out. like I had this shit all I planned mean, out. I honestly, never did that. Like, <laughs> once I was single, I was like, "Well, you know, I just play this out until love shows up again." I Whatever. had it planned out. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, you know then, I just so then, happened to go two you years plan, single. You, you, know you plan, the universe laughs. She's like, ha, 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 nigga, you keep dicking down these girls. Yeah. One of them eventually is going to be like, nah, nigga. <laughs> but, you know, there was a couple yeah. of girls, you know, when I was single, she was offering, like, hey, you want to be with me? And I'm just like, hey, it hasn't even been a year. <laughs> yeah, there's a saying like that, uh, what you said about the universe, but about yeah. God. You want to yeah. make God laugh, tell them your plans. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you said you're going to do? Okay. <laughs> you know, it's just, you, 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 you know, it, it, it works in, in funny ways. So I'm just saying, like, I'm in... I know she's listening, babe. I'm happy in the relationship. <laughs> Can I oh, get I that like out that. there right now? I like that. <laughs> I'm just remember, being, remember. I'm being, we were being honest with each other the other night, and I'm being honest Aww. here on to the world, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. See, that's because, man, that's the crazy thing about it. Like, with your situation, mm-hmm. with old boy, like, you you know, you saying, like, I want him to be honest, but he's not, he's unsure about how he feels. In some ways, you know what I'm saying? As far as being with you and make, taking it to the next level, he's unsure still. Mm-hmm. That's why he can't give you a, a full answer. He's uns- he answer. has uncertainty. He doesn't even know what he want to do with his damn self. Yeah. And and and, and, uh, and that goes, and that's life. That's what a lot of men are going through. 
and it's crazy. You think like a lot of men are alone, but I thought I was the only alone on this feeling. Now mm-hmm. I figured out the dude that you're messing around with is having the same exact feeling. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, I know there are men who are listening to this podcast are going through the same exact thing. I went through that shit. And I told you before, like, I used to tell my sister all the time, if you run into a guy like that, don't. Don't don't entertain it. Just just move forward until you find a dude that's certain. Because but like, see, but that's kind of fucked up. Because that just that is fucked up. But, but you're looking but at. You but he's he's being out, he's being big brother. Sister, yeah, like, he's being big mm-hmm. brother. He's looking out for the best saying? interest of his sister. He yeah. he don't want to hear you know little certain? sister. Yeah, you don't want to hear little sister hear crying to him shit. over the phone about a nigga that who was unsure. Yeah, because because I was I was telling from my experience. I was like, I broke a couple hearts so from being confused, being unsure. You know, and. I took it upon myself to not entertain girls that I was unsure about. Like, if I have unsure feelings to to move forward with you, then I'm not going to entertain it. Mm-hmm. And you know that still fucked them up, but I'm pretty sure they're 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 better off mm-hmm. fucking with me like that. So I told her not to fuck with those guys. If they ever came off uncertain, just move on. You know, just Find take a deep breath and just move on. Like. Cause that ain't that ain't a good realm to be yeah. in. Yeah, cause I guess like you know, just me being the person I am, I always think about others. Cause hearing that, it's like saying, "Well, damn, that sucks for him." Because when he likes somebody, but it's taking him a little longer, it's basically saying like, "Oh, well, if you're not ready, then girls are just not gonna even wait for you." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that makes that would I would feel as a man that would make me feel even more insecure. Like, damn. Like, this is true. You know, you know. So, so well, I guess maybe I should have said, "Get a nigga a year." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Or something of that nature. Give them a time frame. And if it doesn't a personal happen, one, right? Yeah, like you personal, don't have to, don't, don't give nah, them an do ultimatum. Like, do don't do not that. Do not do it. Just don't. letting you know fa- uh, <laughs> followers. Yeah, that's just going <laughs> to fuck him up even more. Oh, yeah. shit. I got a year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think in the back of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's all taking a shower, <laughs> thinking about it. He's getting her backstrokes, thinking about it, looking at the calendar. Like, <laughs> if you're in college, he's going to be sitting in that classroom like, um, <laughs> like Mike before uh, he got his ass whooped on the wood. Yeah. Looking at the clock. <laughs> Swing the year about shit. to happen. Tick tock. You stupid. But go ahead, sorry. All the months flying no, off the calendar. <laughs> 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 Niggas sweating. <laughs> <laughs> fucking the red fucking analog clock is going really fast and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hear the ticks and shit. Oh, my God. That's so funny, give dude. yourself. Give yourself a personal, uh, personal. Keep that to date. yourselves, lady. Yes, keep it to yourself. I feel like you know. I feel like both parties should give themselves a personal thing, like for the guy. If you know where your where your feelings stand with her, that ain't gonna move forward. Mm-hmm. Let her know, man. Please Just let keep, us keep know. it pushing. Like, we, like realize it yourself, cause that's really what it is. Motherfucker yeah. don't realize it themselves. Like you gotta really take in the thought, like yo. If I haven't wanted to move forward with her yet, mm-hmm. it's time to keep pushing, man. Let her know, like, yeah. don't waste your time. Because then you're being selfish yeah. in a sense, right? Yeah, if yeah, yeah. Don't. In a way, they are. If you know that, okay, things aren't going to move forward, but you're still a, playing it's, it's with it, in, knowing she wants way. more. Yeah. yeah, it's indirectly, you know what I'm saying? Because they're not, they're not knowing that they're doing it on purpose or anything. Because they're yeah. not. But, yeah, of yeah. course. But um, for the ladies that are in that situation too, like, like you said, give them a pers- give yourself a personal time frame. If the nigga ain't came around by that time, because I know you're gonna give him plenty of time. Mm-hmm. Just, just keep <laughs> yeah. pushing. And, and, and like and like I said, fellas, if you kind of like tiptoeing around a relationship, you cannot be mad if she if she decides to up and leave. Mm-hmm. You yeah. cannot. You, you have to respect some, her. You have to respect it. <laughs> yeah, understand, ladies. Some guys and fellas, when the girl leave you, you gonna be like, oh shit, and try to get her back and fight for her, and then when she come back, it's gonna be the same shit. Yeah. You just to be get back, back to, to your comfort zone. As soon as she hug you, like okay, you gonna you be hugging, thinking it back in my oh shit, what the fuck I just do? Do I get another? Do I get another year? <laughs> you gonna be like, what the fuck did I just do? I oh just, shit, I'm still unsure. Uh, fuck. Yeah, that's that's deep. That is <laughs> deep. That's real. That's really deep. But anything in conclusion? I know yeah. we kind of yeah. went in on so this. So just one. wrap it up. I mean, he pretty much, they pretty much wrapped it up. You know what I mean? Make sure that if you're uncertain, give yourself, both men and women, give yourself personal time frames on whether you want to move forward or not. Mm-hmm. What else? What else am I missing? Oh, well, men, have a have a one-on-one talk with yourself and really ask yourself how you feel about this woman that, that you're with before, you know, before wasting her time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Don't waste my 
what time do like have a do? real ass talk with yourself <laughs> nigga for real like, like a real like back and forth but just if you look, yourself, in mirror, look, look in the mirror look in the mirror, mirror nigga. point in the mirror and, and rap like like used to do insecure but re- be real with yourself if you can't answer this fucking question right away if you really have to think about it and it's been a while it has to be a while you know of course then that's your answer yeah you're not sure and it's time to move forward because yeah. tr- I, I promise you we will respect it. and even if we get upset we get our feelings you, we could have dodged a bullet on both ends yeah you know what i mean a mm-hmm. fatal attraction mm-hmm. basically well, anyway i hope y'all enjoy that nsa <laughs> If he has sponsors, we would take a break because this was long winded <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys want to pause for a second, catch your breath, collect yourselves, because <laughs> now we're going to be in some fuck shit. Hey. All right. 2017. We, we basically, year. we talked about, uh, we all talked about, you know, relationship stuff <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Yep, yep. So uh, on the side of politics, pop culture and hot topics and all that shit, what were you guys' favorite? or unfavorite moments of this year. And what do you think of the th- overall theme of this year was? Like, what took over, this, what presided the year more? Was it more about sexual allegations or racism? I, 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 kept, I kept going back and forth between that. That is very interesting. Sexual allegations or racism. I'm leaning more towards racism. Yeah. Those are the two choices. Yeah. Racism. 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 Mm-hmm. I'm going to go I'm with sexual allegations, man. I think okay. it's because... Okay. okay, go ahead. You go. Because I know it got hot towards the fourth quarter of the year. Yeah. And then I know racial undertones happen to like, oh, how come How come you know, like the black girls didn't get, you know, how come people ain't believing Lupita's story that Harvey Weinstein did that shit, but they believe in all these white bitches. Like, right. I understand that part of, of the racial undertone. But I'm saying does it affect me? Yes, it affect men. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah. pretty sure, uh, like I mentioned before, niggas are gonna have to start complimenting women in the work space like niggas. <laughs> 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 like niggas are gonna have to just like if the, the girls if you have a pretty attractive coworker, you better look at her at like just a nigga uh. and keep it pushing. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Well, I don't know. Cause, Dapper, cause, like, don't even hug. Because like, if she got her hair done, handshake, you know what I mean? She got her hair done, you can't say, oh, it's a fresh cut. <laughs> I'm like, yo, though fresh, man. You're hey, yo, those curls are popping, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it pushing. Damn, girl, your hair whipped. <laughs> oh, you got that shit laced out. I feel, I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. I, feel uh, that. Like, I see you. You laced out. I see you. I feel you. You laced out, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those pants ain't mad tight, though, but, you know, they uh, look see, okay on that's you. That's where you fuck up. Right there. There. You, can't, you can't talk about her body like that. You can't. It's like, those jeans is clean, though. They clean. They clean. They clean. <laughs> clean leggings, yeah. yeah. I like they the clean. design on them. Yeah, so you can talk about... <laughs> You you could talk about the material, I but you, you can't <laughs> speak on anything body wise. Said yeah. I like the designs on, on the leggings. <laughs> Yeah, that shit fire. Yeah, imagine if that shit flames. backfire. She'd be like, which one's the ones on the back? Ooh. And she turns around like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> push her. No, <laughs> right, push get, her down. Then you get, um... I'll push her down and run away. <laughs> <laughs> I just run away. I'm like, I ain't trying Cause to kill. Because if I try to push her, that means I touched her. Yep. Hey, all I know is, all I know is in my household, she's going to be like, good job, babe. <laughs> you push her down. <laughs> it's gonna be away. like you, the meme. You seen the meme that I posted? The um, the one of uh Lisa and what's his name? When you get into an awkward conversation and you just want to go, he starts rolling down the hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what would happen. <laughs> that would be your best bet. Roll You're down like, that okay. that hall. <laughs> right. Okay, cool, peace. <laughs> Which one? Niggas start, I'm, roll, niggas roll, start roll, high roll, fiving, roll. dapping girls. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's I wouldn't even they give her. I wouldn't give them girls. Right, right. I wouldn't give them. I wouldn't give them girls the one arm Christian hug either. With that, with the yeah. hip out like yeah. it's, like I'm dancing yeah, from North Carolina. Get, yeah, you can still get side boobs. She's like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, you handshake, nigga. We, we doing handshakes like LeBron James with his you teammates so with the Cavaliers, nigga. We doing secret handshakes. So no slap, you slap, 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 no slap. Turn around, get up with the folks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we ain't chest bumping. They ain't slapping your ass. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. No after game hugs, cause the way they hug after the game is like oh, yeah. close as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Like a brotherhood hug. No, no. Can't can't that. be can't be grabbing the top of the head like. That gotta be a skit like. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I would right. be confused as fuck as a female if a dude were to do that as I'm going in for a I, l- I did that. I've done that before. Really? Like, I, I've, I've done that before too. <laughs> yeah. and hey. I got punched for it. Oh, <laughs> what? Yeah, I got punched in the chest for I that. Ain't, I ain't get punched, <laughs> but chest. I got the the look on Nessa's face. That's what I got. <laughs> I got, I got, like I literally got punched in the chest for that. I was like, hey, I'm just trying to be professional. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you get acting all offended and shit. That's, That's super offen- offended, <laughs> right there. Yeah, punching again. <laughs> you punch me. I'm still trying to greet you. I was like, <laughs> violent. I'm telling the boss. Harassment. Right. She it harassed wasn't. Me. It wasn't. At, it wasn't at the workforce. It was like. Years back, well, just imagine if you put it in the workforce situation. <laughs> that would be funny. That I, would be funny. Then I could say that's sexual harassment. I could say, <laughs> Sir, I was just him. trying to give her a handshake. She punched me in my chest. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm going to the I'm going to the HR right now. And then they gonna flip it like, well, she felt threatened. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna flip it and say that. That's what I'm saying. And oh then I'm gonna look at and, and then I'm gonna look at the HR like, do I look threatening? <laughs> yes, you Her are a black say, yeah. male. <laughs> yes, you light skin with dark skin. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to your podcast. <laughs> well, bitch, you didn't subscribe. That's fucked up. <laughs> dark skin side, come out. <laughs> Damn dark Case skin closed. <laughs> Fuck y'all, motherfuckers, then. <laughs> right, flip the tables and shit. Want my last check? Throw a chair through an office window. <laughs> Take my little retirement shit that saved up because the nigga gonna be looking for another job you soon. Silly as hell. That's funny. That's dude. bullshit. But yeah, man. I know sexual assault and fucking yeah. rape and racism was like the the mad thing of the year. I but think I think because we're so used to racism and then. It was, you know, obviously high end with the whole yeah. presidency. But I think with the sexual assaults, it's more. He's like, oh, shit, something new. Yeah. That's that's why <laughs> I feel like that. That's why it seems like it's a bit more. But it's because it's new and it's happening more frequently than something that we're used to. And more happen. people are coming out of like, you know, Russell Simmons, fucking oh, Marshall yeah. Falk. I think the most interesting uh, part about it was it was coming from Hollywood. Yep. You know, all the all the the. The uh, urban legends and shit about Hollywood, how they, the underwork in the Hollywood yeah. niggas snitching, it's coming to yep. surface. They and snitching, like, and we all like, oh shit! It's like the Illuminati and shit yeah. <laughs> showing That's itself. Real. For real, like the Terry re- Crews and fucking, you, you, like you yeah. said, Russell Simmons talking about some. Do you know Russell Simmons' name is taken out of the credits for the Off Def Digital Jam? Oh, uh, oh, oh, Def, Def oh, Comedy. Yeah, on um, Def Comedy on HBO. That's crazy. Dude. Yeah, just Stan Lathan. It's usually Stan Lathan. And Russell Simmons, but yeah. Russell Simmons' name taken out, and he was one of the original originators. But I think he's fighting back. It's called uh, it's hashtag not me, mm-hmm. saying that he didn't do it. Let it's, me, it's, let me it's gonna this. be hard though. Let me bro. ask you this: even when a person accomplishes all that work, and they did the work, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. should they be should it be taken away? I don't think so. I don't think it should be taken away, but. That's just how fucking roll. That's yeah. how it is. Because even if you, even if you, your your innocence is claimed, mm-hmm. already public it's perception, still, yeah. you're done. Yeah, yeah. It's still take. Once you say some shit hurt. like sexual assault or molestation, you're done. Mm-hmm. Assault, yeah. People are like, okay, you whooped the nigga's ass. So mm-hmm. what? You know what I mean? But but, sexual but doing sexual it. deviation shit. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it's, it's a just, rap. just getting accused. Just accuse all accuse being accused enough. That's what I'm saying. You gotta walk. That's what I'm saying. Like, let's say if I do, you know, do commercials or being booked, and I'm working with like, you know, attractive female co-stars or whatever. And they, and they grow up your nuts. Nah, they're not grouping my nuts. <laughs> like the casting director is a female. She grew up your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> How bad Look. you want this job, Marco? <laughs> Look, how bad you want this job, Marco? <laughs> Look, man, I remember Andrew Stoltz said that he a directive patted on his ass oh, when wow. he was do he was shooting for a movie because he was trying to show how hairy his ass was. Oh, now, if I get God. groped on my nuts <laughs> by a casting a female casting director, hopefully, he said, because you know, <laughs> hey, no, no, no offense to the homosexual listeners who listen to this podcast. I just, you know, that's just not me. That's just your preference, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not me. They better not get offended. Just not me. But if that were to happen, um, I'll keep that in my memory bank. <laughs> 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 I'll keep that in my memory bank. 
So just in case I need to come to collect, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, bitch, remember you grabbed my nuts? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a snitch. Right. I'm a recall. snitch. Her answer is gonna be you don't Look, have bitch, proof. Look, bitch, you're not a doctor. Right. We're not going. To, it wasn't my physical. Right. The fuck you think this is? I wasn't trying out for the football team. <laughs> you know what? That gives me another question. What's that? Is it more impactful for men being accused than women? Oh yeah, it's more impactful for men being accused. Because it's just the men, by by nature, by public perceptions, they're more predatory than women. More bar- not, barbaric. And, and not saying <laughs> that women aren't predatory, because I think uh, maybe, I think Jennifer Lawrence mm-hmm. said that uh, a, pro- a female producer uh, had a casting call, and all the people who are auditioning had to strip naked. What? And she's sitting there yeah, just some weird check, ladies out there. Yeah, checking them all out yeah. and check looking at their bodies, see if it's up to par mm-hmm. and touching them and shit. Like it's crazy. Hollywood's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, Y'all be crazy out there. And, and and you know, I know I could talk about the occult type shit. Oh yeah. You know. Um, yeah, they love that. You know, people love them conspiracy theories. Maybe those will be like a, a my nothing to safe segments talk about a whole bunch of crazy conspiracy theories getting niggas scared. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah, drop drop a couple facts that make them think. Oh <laughs> shit! Like UFOs and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, people always say like Hollywood has the lowest frequen- frequencies in uh, energy, so that's why Hollywood is always weird and all that stuff because it has a, it operates at a low frequency level. But that's a whole another conversation. But uh, yeah, what was yeah, another? Y'all can hear that in twenty eighteen. But yeah, what, what was another thing? Twenty seventeen. That's besides racism and rape. Anything. Oh, what were you guys' favorite movie of 2017? Because for me, I was looking back, I was like, I will have to say Get Out. I, I, was just, I was just about to say, like, I have different ones for diff- for each category. Oh, and Get Out categories. is definitely the thriller one or the scary one. I like It. You I, like I, It? I really liked It. You really liked It? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch It. <laughs> you should watch It. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Flip that into the gutter like like the movie. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> and, it, and then I know a late entry. I'm gonna have to say because it was talking about racism. That movie Bright on Netflix. Yeah, I, I just watched. Uh, I would say seventy five percent of it so far. I haven't got to the. What was your impression so far of the movie? The the first impression at the the first ten minutes of the movie was the whole racism. Yeah, I'm like, man, this is like symbolism for racism. Yeah, basically. I mean, did, were you interested or were you like? Oh yeah, I, I was. T- and uh, the critics were going dr- around saying it's the worst movie of 2017. What? Why? I don't know. Now from then what? on, from then on out, I was like, these fucking critics in the geek culture are fucking the whole game up. Like you guys, I don't know what the fuck you guys are on. I don't know if who's paying you guys, but y'all niggas need to stop. Like. I'm looking from what the fans are saying. Mm-hmm. They fuck with the movie. The critics are panning the movie, mm-hmm. but I feel there's an agenda why they're panning the movie. Well, Bright so. is a $90 million movie. Never in Netflix they made a movie that budget just to go straight to Netflix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meaning that it could change the complexity of how movies are going to be distributed. It could get the numbers. It could get streams. And they don't have to market as much. They don't have to go on tour. They ain't got to do no fucking like crazy premieres in different cities. It could just wham, bam, thank you, man. $90 million budget movie in Netflix <laughs> right then and there. But they wouldn't get paid the same. Oh, they're getting they paid. On the sh- they're getting paid. No, regardless. I said they wouldn't get paid the same, I'm saying, like as they would had it been on the big Well, screen, you, you're right? going to have to make some sacrifices. For that to happen, but if the trend yeah, continues, but if the trend oh, continues, yeah. if the trend continues, you know, it's it's gonna be crazy. Like I don't think HBO is doing some shit like that. I don't think, I don't think HBO HBO has original series, but I don't think they're doing shit like that. Okay, it's a meme, real quick. What is it called when you don't want? Oh no! Did oh. You, this, oh, that's. Oh, the Pepe Le Pew one. Pepe Le Pew faces sexual assault charges <laughs> after reports of abuse dating back to 1945. Yeah, Pepe <laughs> Le Pew, man, that motherfucker, you know, he coerced himself a lot on the, on that poor pussy cat. <laughs> 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 At least he was a man that knew what he wanted. 
Hey. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I know not to sound like, maybe I'm going to sound misogynistic when I say this, but fuck it. Um, <laughs> like when you say no offense, but you're about to offend people. <laughs> when you say, when you say oh, with all due respect, you're going to say some disrespectful yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, warning, I'm going to be sound misogynistic <laughs> when I say this, but ladies, I know you guys complain about guys gawking at you, staring at you, giving you the wrong kinds of sexual attention and undressing you with their eyes and all that shit, but... When you're young and beautiful, you don't appreciate that shit. When you get older and past your prime, you're not looking as hot as you used to, you're going to miss them stares. <laughs> you're yep. going to miss them cat calls. Yep. You're going to miss that attention. I'm just saying, when you're 80 <laughs> years old, hopefully in your kid's guest house. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> not in retirement home. Hopefully, if you you know if your kid can afford to have you at home, you know you you will miss that attention because you're like ah, back in my day I was a beautiful <laughs> day and, and, and young men used to always can't call me and oh man I missed that attention. You so stupid. <laughs> I was. I was I was Miss Southie of so 2010. Oh no, my god! No, he did it. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> You're fired, <laughs> Miss Southie. <laughs> oh, I was Miss Southie 17. Man, hell no! All the niggas all over the different sets used to holler at me. All it could have been Skyline, Lincoln, <laughs> Emerald you Coast so neighborhood niggas. They loved me. So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh Even God. the cholos wanted some of this chocolate. <laughs> I hate you. Oh man, but I'm just saying for real though. Like when you guys get older, <laughs> you guys are gonna miss that shit. So, just just saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But I, back, I hope what goes extinct is critics. Yeah, because because back to bright because like, I think bright is gonna move on. They're already gonna they already uh, have a sequel. Oh, Netflix already passed the nice, sequel. Nice, so the sequel's nice. going to happen. The stream's going to keep coming. And if people are really engaged and they really like these original big budget movies that come to Netflix, it's going to hurt theaters. Wait, so you say you didn't gonna finish it, but it's a movie. So is it a long movie? Or? It's like a tour. Yeah, it's, it's a regular reg- oh, yeah. movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a movie. Okay. It's a movie. It's not the first movie that came uh, straight to Netflix. No, but this is a big budget movie that came to Netflix. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, wh- there was another one by default. Mm-hmm. By default, uh, that shit with uh, James Franco and and Seth Rogen. Oh yeah, because that was by to, default though. Yeah, but no, there was another movie with John Boyega mm-hmm. in it. Well, Dude. I mean, big. I'm, I'm yeah, I was saying the yeah, big a big budget movie. Yeah, but I think this is gonna change the game. It's gonna be a change ga- change game uh, game, game changer. changer. Sorry, mm-hmm. and, and that's the thing. I think people are scared of game changers, like Netflix was Netflix was to Blockbuster, or how Amazon was and to other stores, <laughs> and now. <laughs> What Netflix is doing now, that AMC, Regal, like any mm-hmm. motherfuckers who own theaters ain't going to like that shit. They are not. So they're going to party, hey, critic, say any kind of mean shit. And some of the critics are just like, it's like, it's the worst movie ever. <laughs> nigga, how? Right. I mean, it's not a perfect movie, but nigga, I've seen way worse movies you than know, this. You know and what? I feel ever? like they... Nigga, they said it was the worst movie of 2017. Oh, damn. Like, obviously, they haven't watched the Fan <laughs> 4 stick from last year. Stupid. Or they've seen Spider-Man 3. This year. There's some terrible movies that's worse yeah. than, than Bright, because Bright wasn't bad at all. Bright is not bad at all. Y'all need to stop tripping. But, uh, man, I know it's, it's like getting... some personal shit. I know it's getting kind of late. Uh, well, we have two categories for Jiggas Up of... Jiggas up uh, awards. We're gonna probably put them out on the website of our picks, but uh, we're gonna start it off with the ladies. Ladies first. We call this the Jiggas Up Woman of the Year. Pretty self-explanatory. I'll talk about the nominees and I'll break it down why they're there. We'll start off with Cardi B. Need I say more? Bodak Yellow breaking all kinds of records. It's, yeah, it's something that uh, Nicki Minaj haven't even done yet. Yeah, making number one on the mm-hmm. Billboard. Yeah, Nicki Minaj hasn't done that, and she got a fat ring on her ring finger, gauging yep. ring. So, <laughs> yeah, despite and, getting and rose from adversity. 
So yeah, what they call hip love and hip hop. <laughs> yeah, she she got out of love. Like it was so bad that Jocelyn Hernandez had to make a <laughs> a diss song on Cardi B that didn't nobody care about. I didn't know she made one. <laughs> See, there you have it. There you have it. Jocelyn's um, trash, man. Angela Rye, one of the most popular, colorful CNN political analysts out there, and she's dating Common, and she's getting death threats for that. Death threats for dating Common. Yes, she is. Not Why? the stuff she says on CNN, but for dating Common. Why? <laughs> Yo, that's Why? funny. Jealous women. We didn't yeah, want. yeah. Oh. You ain't know the ladies love Common. I mean, yeah, but I thought it was something else. Just oh, he got, he got a beard, opinion. right? Don't he got a beard? He got yeah, a beard. Let me some Common shit. Look at see, bald head and a beard. <laughs> bald hair, deep no voice. Bitch over it, but damn. Bald, bald conscious head, rap. deep voice, conscious <laughs> rap. Love he loves Common. he loves his black women. <laughs> He's stupid. <laughs> stupid. And then um I I have to nominate Gal Gadot on this one too because she was the female superhero of the year. Mm-hmm. She did something that Marvel woman couldn't do. Was hold down the fort by herself. And being the only DC movie that people can, fans and critics can agree on. Yeah, she's yep. the female superhero that can hold her own. Let alone shit on a couple of you male superheroes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, and then uh, the scene stealing Tiffany Haddish. She had her book, uh, The Last Unicorn. She is one of the most fastest rising female stars in Hollywood. And she did it by being her motherfucking self. She did Real, it her as way. a motherfucker. I like that. She went white famous quick. <laughs> white Real famous. quick. And then, of course, Issa Rae, the ever so talented writer, director, and producer of the hit show Insecure. So, those are our nominees of Women of the Year. Stiff as fuck. No pun, in, no sexual allegations, <laughs> pun intended. Stupid. But, man. Who do you guys have? Mm, so it's Cardi B, Angela Rye, Tiffany Haddish, Issa Rae, and Gal Gadot. Mm-hmm. And Gal Gadot, yeah. To me, it's between Tiffany Hat. I'm going to go with Tiffany Haddish, dude. Tiffany Haddish? I'm not even going to say between. <laughs> it's close. It's some close shit, but I give Tiffany Haddish the, the nod because I like her style and I like. Well, I like I like I enjoy watching her grow mm-hmm. to success mm-hmm. throughout this year. Yeah, she the others I did too, but hers was just great that much years. more yeah. significance to to me personally. I'm gonna roll with my girl Issa. Issa. Mm-hmm. Issa had the show. Because remember, I wasn't and even fucking with it with the first season when you guys kept talking about it, like. Mm. You know, but then after Take that, when I actually, right, I did, and then actually, uh, when I actually started watching it, I got hooked, and then just, I just like who she is as a person. Yeah, like yeah. she's so fucking dope to me. She is, and she represents Cali. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tiffany has from L.A. too, so yep. oh, both. oh, I'm not taking that away from anybody else. I'm <laughs> yeah. just saying like yeah. that. Absolutely. Save me. I'm not taking that away from Issa. Yeah. 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 Like all hey, y'all. Hey, hey, all y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all listening. To, to, I love all y'all. To, to us, all y'all ladies yeah, are winners. All of y'all are yeah. winners. All y'all ladies are winners and all y'all own. Uh, damn. Because I fucks with Cardi tough. B tough too. I fucks, with, I fucks with all of them tough. Damn, man. It's just tough, Car- man. Cardi B is dope as a person. Tiffany's dope as a person. Issa's dope as a person. Shoot. Angela Rye is dope as a person. Gal Gadot is dope as a superhero. You no, know I love me some Wonder Woman. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I picked Issa for me. Man. What shit. about you, Marco? What are you gonna do, man? Marco. Damn. This shit is tough. Um, he gonna say Angela, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, we can make our own picks and then we can just post it up. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And then they can decide the winner. But uh, I like your penmanship. Do a poll for a boy. <laughs> Oh, this is this is sloppy shit. I, I don't I'm know. I've even, never really I'm, seen you guys write. So I'm not it's even weird. Re- Everything through text, you know, technology. Um, I'm gonna go with Tiffany Haddish, man. I'm gonna go with Tiffany Haddish because what she was doing was groundbreaking shit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she was in Girls Trip. She stole the show. She Girls sure Trip. Fucking did. Girls Trip was a very a successful movie with a all black cast. Mm-hmm. She was the SNL guest host, the first black comedic host. To be, you know, she made history with that too. Yeah, as a female. As a female, I should have written. Uh, also, should have written that one girl 
the, I forgot her name. She's a screenwriter, and she was in the show um, Masters of None, and she wrote the episode about being a, coming out mm-hmm. as a lesbian during Thanksgiving. That was a great episode as well. I forgot the young lady's name, but she's a very talented writer too. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with Tiffany Haddish, man. Tiffany Haddish, she got her book. She she had an incredible year. All these women all together had yeah. incredible years. Yep. And you know, uh, from Cardi B hitting the charts, Angela Rye having a very popular podcast now, dating Common and being one of the most sought after political analysts on CNN. From Gal Gadot being one of the most sought after um, su- female superheroes to lead the way and inspiring young lo- young girls to believe that they could be strong and powerful and majestic as Wonder and, Woman. And, and a- attractive at the <laughs> same time. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> and, and Drop Dead Gorgeous, you know. Um, and then Issa Rae being a producer, director, creating a very cult classic episode, you know, episodic uh, series about millennials going through relationship problems and and life problems and all together it's very relatable so all y'all ladies are winners mm-hmm. in my eyes i'm pretty sure as far as this podcast eyes as well yeah now yeah, my eyes too Oops. i'm looking at all yeah now for the men of the year <laughs> for jigs up man of the year we have nominees shannon sharp <laughs> we have lavar ball colin kaepernick Charlemagne the God and Joe Budden. They all had some interesting years. They all had some great years. Uh, from Shannon Sharp, you know, they say he was too country. He couldn't be on um, broadcast television. But he turned out to be one of the most articulate, most colorful sports analysts in the morning when you watch Undisputed with him and Skip Bayless. Uh, and he keeps it real. And he's hilarious. And he got and he shot his shot at Nicole Murphy and, and lived his dream. I c- but was like, he in a relationship? Yeah, he's a nigga for that. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Sharp is still <laughs> nominated <laughs> for Man of the Year. Because you know what? We fucks with Shannon Sharp. <laughs> okay, LeVar Ball. Me and Easy went to see LeVar Ball at Complex Con. <laughs> very outspoken, colorful dude himself. Mm-hmm. Very animated. Um, very disruptive. And he's challenging not only the NBA, the sneaker industry, and the NCAA now. He wants to start his own league for high school people who graduated out of high school students who just want to play ball. The shit, his unconventional ways are gaining attention to, through everybody mm-hmm. from him saying outlandish shit saying that he'll beat Michael Jordan one on one to having it, saying his son be- is better than Steph Curry yeah, yeah and, so and, and giving me a headache listening to him on CNN <laughs> and talking about we send Donald Trump some big baller shoes oh my God. red wh- three <laughs> pairs one red, red one, one white, white one, one blue because we patriotic that's funny but <laughs> You know, I, you know, who, you know who I'm fit. <laughs> you are up, Lamar yeah. Ball. That's who I got. <laughs> that's who you got. So forget Colin Kaepernick, who no, basically no. started the whole kneeling, hey. and that shit carried on even without him not being on there. Yeah. Like niggas really the boycott the NFL if he didn't get signed, mm-hmm. which I feel that in a way is kind of stupid because it's like, why would you want to boycott something that you know? The owners don't give a fuck about him, regardless. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? H- him giving the job back to a place where, basically, it's like modern day slavery, gladiator type shit. It's like, well, what's the point? Like, because he's out out of a job. I mean, he's doing great things without the NF- NFL. So mm-hmm. he continuously still giving out his money and his generosity with his time, his money, his resources to underprivileged kids, to Meals on Wheels, and he's doing a lot. And he's being a very supportive boyfriend for his. Um, for his girlfriend, Ness Nitty, out there for uh, Hot 97. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Colin Kaepernick is still doing things outside of the help of the NFL. And then um, two of my favorite media guys now, Charlemagne the God. What can I say? Black Privilege. That book is fire. Mm-hmm. I listened to the audio version. Shit was hilarious to me. Brilliant Idiots podcast. We got to meet him out there in Pas- uh, what? Was it Pasadena? No, no, no. It was, no, it was at the in Grove. LA, at it the was in the Grove, yeah. Met him at the Grove. Um, you know, you, you just 
you know, he's a Marvel head through and through. And sometimes he bashed DC a little too bad. But, you know, I look over that. (laughs) 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 But through and through, man, this dude's been authentic. He's been producing, uh, you know, television shows. He's on, you know, he's. He's he's on another level, you know. He keeps elevating himself, and to this day, people are still looking forward to Donkey of the Days. Every day, this dude, this dude, like for me being a podcaster and seeing how he moves as a media personality is like this dude is a monster. Yeah, mm-hmm. this dude's been doing it. He's been perfecting his craft for over twenty years. Damn, think about that. He's been doing. He's been an intern for a radio station for since nineteen ninety eight, and to be to where he is right now, even with like maybe little speech impediments and all that shit. He still overcame all that shit. So, Charlemagne, he's up there. And then Joe Button, late, late entry. Um, you know, Joe Button is ruffling the feathers of hip hop media. <laughs> he's very unfiltered. People ain't gonna like everything that he says, but he speaks with a lot of passion. And for him creating a baby, you know, with everyday struggle and feeling that complex weren't gonna compensate him. What he believed that he's worth, he walked away, and now he got the bag from Revolt. Mm-hmm. So I can't get mad at that. He's you know, and he's, you know, he just got his son with Sin Santana, so you know he's he's being he's on dad mode. He's looking out for his looking out for his kids. But everybody's gonna remember his antics with the Migos, the BET Awards. Yeah. <laughs> he just walked out the interview. <laughs> oh man. And, 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 you know, people and, and Joe Budden, you know, I, I know Zach isn't too fond of Joe Budden, yeah. but I just keep telling Zach, like, dude, the shit he does, it works, man. It's like it's about him. He, well, he, it appears that he's the cantaker's old hip hop head. It's like, get off my lawn, you fucking mumble rappers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in my day, we had to say syllables and enunciate <laughs> our words, you know. Um, but Joe, he, he relishes on that role. It works a lot. Of, it works well. And he, the power and the impact that he has on everyday struggle because they quit like the, the fans. He, I think Complex lost 600,000 subscribers overnight. the moment he was out overnight. Overnight. Gone. That is, that's powerful. That's powerful. You know, and basically he's just saying, you know, power to the creators because it is a new it's a new age. You know, maybe he had one hit, but he's still around. So you can't. Can't really fault him for that, man. So Joe Budden, last entry for Man of the Year. So for Man of the Year, personally, damn, this is dumb. this one's tough too. Shit. I got Cap. You got Cap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, didn't G two make him Man of the Year too? Yeah, Citizen of the Year. Oh, okay. And they got a lot of angry people, <laughs> angry about that. Yeah, they go all chill out. Yeah. <laughs> go 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 to Subway have a sandwich. Angry Dude. conservatives. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go on a limb, man. I'm gonna say my man Shannon Sharp, man. I'm gonna say my man Shannon Sharp. I like, that. I like Sharp. that choice. I like that choice. I, I'm gonna go with Shannon Sharp. I like that Sharp. we have different choices right now. Yeah. I like this. I'll go with Shannon Ooh. Sharp, but we'll go ahead. We'll post it up on uh, yeah. Facebook See what and, and, and let y'all know what y'all think and y'all could talk about it amongst yourselves. We did have another uh, section called Fuck Nigga of the Year. <laughs> Nominees were R. Kelly, Tyrese, Oscar De La Hoya, Donald Trump, and Scammers of the Year. So far, we had Conor McGregor with Floyd Mayweather mm-hmm. and Kimberly Jones. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the rest is to be seen. What do you think about Jordan Peele being in that Man of the Year nomination? Um, I mean, he may get out, but what else broke, did he do after broke that? Broke a couple records with it, you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, the accomplishments came with it, but he's, I'm like, what's the body of work, though? A, well, I mean, Joe Button's uh, nomination wasn't much, much body. Of work, it was just the impact he made with the one thing he did. That's all. I was, you know. yeah, okay. Uh, Jordan Peele, I have Jordan Peele. Give, give him a little shout out, I guess. A yeah. Little spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, I had Jordan Peele in there, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, anything? Any closing remarks? This is the last episode of 2017. Anything you guys you guys want to say before we uh dip up out of here? 2018 is going to be a great year <laughs> because I said so. <laughs> LOA. In the universe. <laughs> I'm saying it right now. So I'm on tiptoe in 2018. No tiptoe in no two, 2018. <laughs> tiptoe 18. If you could choose one song 
that's going to represent 2018 for you, what would you choose? And it could be new or old songs. Like that, this this song is. Going well, to I'm gonna tell you this. Uh, I, I don't have a song, but the album I've been playing the most throughout 2017, "Drunk" by Thundercat. Ooh. That's my favorite album, 2017. I have to look. Give me a second. This, this is a I've, great, I've, and, and, and don't, really don't get me wrong, 2017 has been a great year for music. Oh, yeah. Great year for music. But personally, for me, when I'm driving, when I'm vibing, I'm chilling, if I need to go to sleep, <laughs> I'm playing Thundercat. He said if I need to go to sleep. Yeah, I fell asleep when I heard that shit. So I didn't really, so I've never really got to listen to it. But when you get to is listen to this? No, no, I mean, no. I was just yeah, I going, fell asleep. That no. shit was whack. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 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 Motherfuckers like, this don't know shit about music. <laughs> the <Thundercat laughs> was a classic. Man, I was in the car probably already half asleep when the songs were playing, when the album was playing. That was when we was coming back from. From, from my birthday, <laughs> from Knott's Berry. Knott's Berry. Hey, everybody knocked out too. Poor baby, she got to drive. <laughs> everybody knocked <laughs> out and I'm playing the music. <laughs> I know she was like, hey. she's like, you, you lucky I like you. Nigga. Right. Right. <laughs> Try you lucky. <laughs> that was a She's such a sweetheart. I would have to say yeah. 444. 444? Yeah. Wait, That's so are you choice. so are you guys talking about so you guys are going based off of I'm going based on albums. I'm going based on personal albums. Yeah, I, I can't do one song right now. Yeah, I can't do one song. I could just go buy albums, something that I vibe with the most. I would say damn in reverse. Yeah, because damn was another one I looked at. The, Dan- the Daniel Caesar album was one I kind of checked out. But, yeah, 444 was the one for me. I don't have one particular song. What about you, SZA? Like that SZA album? No. That your name, I Ico? Listened to oh, what? I haven't listened to it. You heard the song The Weeknd? Yeah, barely. I started hearing it because of how big the message was behind it, Side I guess chicks. you can say. Um, but other than that, like, I don't care for that song. Like, I'll listen to it, but I, don't <laughs> I ain't no fucking side yeah, chick. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't playing this fucking. I don't give a fuck about that song. My <laughs> man is my man. <laughs> Yours is it. not it at all, that's bitch. Where it ends. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, <laughs> Friday. Shit, I'm, I'm trying to get that me nigga a is man. mine fuck all around. weekend. I'm trying to get somebody <laughs> else's man. Hell no, nah, I'm good off of that shit. As far as albums, I can't really say that i had an album this year that i had on repeat that i can think of of course i'm i know there's more music in the beginning of the year but i don't know but the reason why i asked because when i listen to pandora at times i listen to spotify more but when i listen to pandora the song that like gets me and i'm just like okay i'm ready for 2018 is um glow drake and kanye like wow, when I hear she that went shit. to more life on us. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> I don't know. She when went I all to the way shit. back to the beginning of the year. More life, nigga. That that's like I know, twenty eighteen. That's like how I'm feeling. That's crazy. That's how I'm feeling. This is the only year I think people looked at Drake's body of work and just said came and went. Because mm-hmm. usually every time a Drake drops an album yep. this year, it's just on repeat. Like more life was kind of like it was a flash in the pan. Yes, for for me, yeah. for me, it's been that way, with his albums coming and going. Oh, we know. But you know, <laughs> welcome we know guys, Wel- welcome, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the party. Yeah. Um, but that's my. I will say, Division too. I like that album, the latest Division album, Morning After. Fuck, dude, so many, so, so many different albums. Shout out to Ah uh, Zach, because that's the first time I ever heard about them was when he was talking about it. That one episode. Yeah. But yeah, man. Oh, shit, man. Uh, Let me go ahead. Oh, yeah. As far as likes on Facebook, shout out to all the people who we invited to like. Uh, Hopefully, we're up at least 200. So if it's up close to 200, can we hit the 300, 400, 500? Just keep keep going. Keep keep rising to the top. Yep. You know what I mean? Trying to get our community popping over there. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at Jig Is Up Pod. And if you need to send us a listener letter, let us know. If you need some advice, yeah. hit us up at yes, yes, Jig Is Up Podcast yes. at gmail.com. And if for some reason, if you cannot 
find a podcast platform of your choice or even look us up on YouTube, we do have a website, thejigasuppodcast.com, and you can catch all of our episodes in there. So you could backtrack and find us saying a whole bunch of fuck shit. You could you could find points that we contradict ourselves, but you know what? That's the part of growth, motherfucker. So go ahead. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Go back. Listen to the archived episodes. Triple dog dare you. And uh, <laughs> shit, man. Now you know that you won't hear from it. us till to the next year. Yeah. Maybe we'll put out a compilation episode of all the highlights and favorite parts of 2017. But uh, until then, if you enjoy listening to this podcast as much as we love making it, because we do what we love and love what we do. And if you're not being your motherfucking self, you know I gotta say, the, the jig, jig is, is up. And we out. Bruh. Happy New Year, y'all. Yes, happy Thank New Year. Thank you for year. listening. See Shout you in 2018. Thank you guys for rocking with us. <laughs> Episode 100 coming soon. Jeez Louise, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs>